What have we gotten ourselves into? What's up, guys? We're hitting legs today for that Flex Friday workout of the day here at the bodybuilding.com corporate headquarters. And you know, usually Friday, people reserve for like arms, shoulders, chest, maybe getting something a little lighter in. But today, we're bashing out some legs. Why? Because because it's leg day, that's why. And you guys have been wanting to see some legs for a while. I know you guys usually vote on an upper body exercise, uh, group of muscles exercise, but today I gave you no choice. We picked uh, on my Instagram stories, the two options were legs for strength or legs for hypertrophy. And the majority of people by a very close margin picked legs for hypertrophy. So what does that mean? That means that we're going with a little higher reps today, okay? We're not starting off with heavy squats or anything. We're actually starting off with trap bar deadlifts, trying to keep our reps at about that 10 to maybe even 15 range, which is really optimal for growth, development of the legs for overall size, um, but still a very good strength exercise. So typically, we're starting off with some kind of squat. The trap bar deadlift is a really, really good option, in my opinion, severely underutilized in the gym. I've actually been replacing typical back squats with a trap bar deadlift lately, doing it two times per week. One day heavy, one day a little lighter. Today's the lighter day. So, got three plates on the trap bar here. We're going for 10 reps, five sets. We're gonna start off without glove, without straps, no belt because we're over six reps, don't really need it. Uh, but I got a few of my leg day essentials on. First of all, the headband of gains, gotta have that for every leg day. Second of all, the long sleeve shirt so we don't get distracted by our lack of swole on the upper body. Third thing, short shorts because, well, it's leg day and we gotta show off some quads. We got our knee wraps on. I always like those are our knee sleeves for today to help protect the joints and the converse because we need some good flat sole shoes for leg day. So we're gonna get after a first set of 10. Let's get rowdy here. We're going for full resets at the bottom, guys. So we're not bouncing. We're not coming down and using the momentum off the floor to help us with our next rep. We're gonna come down, pause, and come back up for 10 reps. I got my heart rate monitor on today and I got a feeling that sucker's gonna get ticking. So here we go. First set, 10 reps, trap bar deadlift. First set, this one's gonna take the breath out of us, no doubt. Guys, you can find me, uh, I do most of my stuff on Instagram, at TrainerMike1. Um, you can also check me out on Facebook, athlete page there, at Trainer Mike Physique. Uh, chat says you forgot the fifth thing, which is your superhero shaker. Ah, chat, right you are. We got it. And I actually today, I had a Captain America shirt on, Two, chose not to wear it for leg day because it's gonna be ruined. It would have been ruined after today. All right, so this is actually a question from Instagram. How do you know how many macros you should be getting each day? How do you know how many macros you should be getting each day? Guys, totally individualized, um, but good basic rule of thumb, start with your body weight in lean mass. So go get your body fat taken, you should have at least one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, minimum, okay? You can go up to 1.5 if you just really like protein. Um, after that, you calculate fats. Fat should make up 20 to 30% of your diet, depending on if you like fat or not. If you like fat, go 30%. If you'd rather have carbs, go 20%. The remainder of your macros come from carbs. Where can I get those shorts? Where can you get these shorts? ZV, these are ZV shorts. Um, Good stuff, good to lift in. And they're short. Gotta have the short shorts, guys. It's leg day, right? Gotta be able to show off the quad gains if I have any, we'll see. Okay, set two. It's gonna be really hard to talk today. But that's leg day for you. 10 reps, full reset to the bottom. Let's go. B. 
big difference when you go for that full reset at the bottom and don't let yourself bounce. I'm gonna check heart rate real quick. I think it'll be interesting to see where we're at. And we are currently recovering 70, 69% max heart rate. It's tough. What is the difference between ISO 100 and the ISO Elite by Dimatize? The ISO 100 is a 100% whey protein isolate, primarily hydrolyzed, and the Elite is a concentrate isolate blend. What am I drinking? I've got the Dimatize Amino All Nine today. I got the Cola Lime Twist, which is a, kind of an interesting flavor. Gives you that little bit if you're like addicted to sodas and you want something different, it can be a good option. So that just went live on the site, by the way. The Dimatize All Nine Amino. We we'll probably put a link in the chat there. And I want to know what's your favorite pre-workout? My favorite pre-workout. I'm certainly partial to the uh, Dimatize pre wo Today I went with the hand spun cotton candy. Kind of switch out between that and the pineapple orange crush. Definitely for a leg day, caffeine goes up a little higher because it's, uh, well, we need it. All right, guys. Third set, we're going five here. Let's blow it up, baby. You gotta hike the shorts up just a little bit before you start that next set, you know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. It's loud. They probably hate me right now. <sighs> when should I take creatine, glutamine, and BCAAs? When should you take creatine, glutamine, and branched chain amino acids? Creatine is kind of one of those things that accumulates in your bloodstream over time. So it doesn't really matter a whole lot. However, take it with carbs, ideally. For a lot of people, it's just easier to throw it in with a pre workout or a post workout drink. Glutamine should always be taken um, morning, after workout, and evening, and branched chain amino acids during exercise, ideally. <sighs> uh, did you warm up or did you go straight to Yeah, I warmed up. So I spent uh, a little bit of time foam rolling, IT bands, hip flexors, and um, then I did about four active dynamic warm ups. So it's, uh, it's MyZone is the brand. It's ones that we team up with at our gym here in the Treasure Valley. And um, I use that app, MyZone, to track my heart rate. So it's a chest strap that I wear. Are two-a-day workouts a good idea? Are two-a-day workouts a good idea? They can be, but they're really not necessary for most people. Um, and it's not really that realistic for a lot of people's schedules. However, if you can, you know, it's kind of nice to break up, like maybe cardio at one point in time and then weight training at least four hours separate from that. All right, you sure you guys don't have any more questions right now? Because I still haven't caught my breath and I'm looking for an excuse to hold off on this next set. But... Crunchy or creamy? Oh, we won't get started on the crunchy or creamy conversation right now. Okay, throw it in there. What do you guys think? Crunchy or creamy? That could be our next 10 minute conversation we have in between sets. Woo! Peanut butter, baby. Here we go. 10 reps. There it is, four sets down, one more to go. It's definitely a good way to start off leg day. The higher reps definitely work the heart rate up a lot more, but that's good for you. We don't have to do cardio today when we get heart rate up. 
Top tips for maintaining leg muscle while on a cut. One, get at least that gram per pound of lean body mass. Um, two, don't take your cardio overboard. Okay, most people, when you start doing too much cardio, you suck all your energy away from being able to have productive weight training sessions, and then you start losing muscle. Tight hip flexors while squatting, what's the advice? Roll out your hip flexors before you start. Like I spent five minutes or so with a medicine ball rolling out my hip flexors to try and loosen those muscles. And then do some good active stretches, you know, like world's greatest stretch. Take some time to really focus on opening up those hip flexors. Because if your hip flexors are too tight, it'll absolutely screw your leg day. We don't want to screw leg day, not like that. Is training legs, legs once a week optimal? Is training legs once a week optimal? No. I would train legs twice a week if you have any aspirations of growing size or strength in your legs. Um, and do one day where you focus more heavy strength base, one day where you go a little higher reps like we're doing today, hypertrophy base. Um, do you always lift without a belt or when do you use your belt? I use a belt if I'm six reps or less on leg days. But over six reps, I think I can rely on some good natural intra-abdominal pressure to protect my back. What's the difference between the new all-nine aminos and regular PCAs? So what's the difference between the new dimatized all-nine aminos and regular branched-chain amino acids? The all-nine aminos have nine all-nine essential amino acids that make up a complete protein. Um, branched-chain amino acids just have your anabolic amino acids like leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Um, and branch chains are really good for shorter weight training sessions. Essential amino acids are really necessary for longer than 60 minute training sessions, including cardio. Uh, somebody in the office is being sarcastic. They said they could not hear you drop the weight. That's good. So somebody upstairs, so we're at the bodybuilding.com headquarters and somebody in the office is upstairs said they can't hear me dropping the weights and I sent some sarcasm with that. So we'll do it a little extra loud for him this time. Guys, trap bar deadlifts are not the time to be cautious about your negative. This is a power movement and we're trying to come up with authority and then we're not focusing a lot on that eccentric or negative. Last set, 10 reps. My calluses are uh, definitely getting some work today. Here we go. <sighs> We can go home now. No, we can't. We got a lot of work still left to do. <laughs> it's done. Is a high fat meal before bed ideal? Is a high fat meal before bed ideal? Yeah. I actually like doing a lower carb, higher fat meal before bed. It'll help keep you satiated throughout the night. Um, fat's a very satiating macronutrient, meaning it'll help you feel full. The trap bar deadlift works your legs differently than a conventional deadlift. You can get a little more glute and quad activation out of this than you would out of a conventional deadlift. All right, guys, next up, we got split squats here, which I'm really regretting at this point in time, throwing into the program. But split squats are a great exercise. So for this one, we're going three sets of 15 on each leg. And we're really focusing on making sure we get good quality contractions in. You can do this with barbell or dumbbells. So barbell on your shoulders or dumbbells. I'm gonna use dumbbells today. Pick a fairly light weight so I can make sure I'm getting the best contraction possible there. We're actually gonna start off with just 30 pounds and uh, really try and work this booty. Here we go. Driving through the heel of the foot, 15 reps. Five, 
No rest at the top. Short, short break to catch your breath. Great exercise for anybody that wants to build the booty. Is it better to split hamstrings and quads on different days or put them together? So is it better to split hamstring and quads on different days or put them together? Um, I see people do it both ways. Personally, I just put them together and I do one heavier day and one lighter day per week. And that kind of periodization seems to be the best for strength and size. Steady state cardio after leg day, or is it better to roll out and do band work? They're both good, you know. Just depends on how much gas you have left in the tank. Today, I can tell you I won't be doing cardio after this leg workout. Um, I might wait and do it later. But for a lot of people, especially on a high rep leg day, this cardio enough. Okay, we're coming back here. 15 reps on each side. Really feel the glutes fire when you do this right. So how do you feel this more in your glutes versus your quads? Focus your attention on driving through the heel of the foot. So you'll notice I'm trying not to let my knee go too far past my toes. I'm not pushing off the ball of my foot. I'm pushing off the heel of my foot. Happy National Ice Cream Day, Mike. How do you celebrate? Happy National Ice Cream Day, thank you. I'm gonna celebrate by going and getting Froyo tomorrow. I don't know if Froyo cancels ice cream, but I'm not a big ice cream person, but I do like Froyo. And tomorrow they got an all you can fill for $4 deal. I got to cash in on that. Uh, do you have any tips for somebody who can never find a good lifting partner? Good tips for somebody who can't ever find a good lifting partner? Get good at lifting by yourself. That's probably the best advice I could offer you. I lift by myself five out of the six days every week. and. Uh, it takes some getting used to. You got to push yourself, but you can do it. Is moaning and screaming and slamming weights good for the gains? Is moaning, screaming, and slamming weights good for the gains? Yeah. I mean, come on, guys. Everybody knows that it produces at least 20% more gains when you moan, scream, and slam weights. Uh, do you suggest taking BCAAs, and when should I take them? Do I suggest taking breast chain amino acids? When should you take them? You know, essential amino acids are definitely starting to take over uh, based off the current research. Branched chain amino acids are still fine if you're getting enough protein in and you just want a little extra anti-catabolic support during a short workout. All right. We'll go last set, three sets of 15 on each side. Here we go. Ah, 
switch. Yes, even if they're only 30 pounds, I'm going to slam those 30 pounds. Is your foot position ideal for this exercise where your toes are off the back? You know, is the foot position on the back ideal? You know, my toes were off the back. I like doing it like that, so there's two ways you can do it. One would be like this. I don't like to do that because it makes my foot cramp when I do that, and I feel like I find just a lot of unneeded tension. So I like to let my foot relax while I'm doing it, I find it easier to get in the contraction I want on the leg I'm working. Hip thrusts or squats for booty gains, bro? Hip thrusts or squats for booty gains? Both. They're both good. Why not do both? How can I improve my balance while doing split leg? How can you improve your balance while doing split leg lunges? Try getting like a PVC pipe and holding on to it for a little while, or if you have a partner, like I used to do with my clients, I'd just have my arm there as support if they needed it, if they felt like they were gonna fall over. All right guys, so next up we're going over to the hack squat. And we're gonna superset hack squats with um, goblet squats, which this is gonna be an absolute quad killer for us. So we're going three sets of 10, um, and then right into three sets of 10 on the goblet squats. So obviously grab a lighter weight than what I normally would on the goblet squats. We'll go 55 as opposed to like, you know, we might do like 100 or something or like 300 or something. We'll do this. So the focus here is on the quads. We want to make sure that we keep tension going through there. Hack squats and goblet squats are both great, great quad builders. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to go with a lighter weight and I'm going to focus on elevating the heels for the goblet squat. So for this one, I'm going to grab a couple of 10 pound plates to put under my heels for the goblet squat. And that's going to help keep the tension on the quads, a very light weight for the hack squats, because we're keeping in mind that immediately following the hack squats, we're going right into goblets. Our, our foot position is gonna be low on the platform. The lower on the platform you go, typically the greater the stress you're gonna put on the quads. So we're gonna go here for those quads. 10, immediately into 10, try not to vomit, repeat three times. Here we go. Rack that up, just enough time to kind of catch your breath. Heels are elevated right into goblet squats. This is fun. Do I prefer goblet squats with a dumbbell or a kettlebell? No preference. Either one works just fine. Um, and they're both pretty similar to hold on to. If my gym doesn't have a hack squat machine, what is my alternative? If your gym does not have a hack squat, you could use a leg press um, and just try and keep your feet bottom of the platform close together. So you'll notice, like on here, we're very bottom of the platform with our feet close together, toes pointed straight forward. We don't want toes pointed out here. We really want to help target the quads, more specifically work on the sweep. What tempo should I be using for goblet squats? Tempo for goblet squats, when you're supersetting it, 
just control it on the way down. I'd love to get a four second negative. There's just no way following hack squats I could get that much in. So control it. It's kind of weird guys, there's people in the gym today. Going at a little later time, I like it. Gives a little bit of energy to it. Maybe slightly more realistic to what you might see in your own gym. Okay, 10 reps, followed by 10 on the goblets. Focus is on the quads, building that sweep, the outer part of the quads by keeping our feet close together, bottom of the platform. <sighs> Rack it up, go retrieve the weight that you unnecessarily slammed down on the prior set, elevate the heels, and let's go. Not all the way up, keep the tension on the quads. Bring your sweat rag for this one or your headband of games. Amanda wants to know what are your thoughts on eccentric hack squat? An eccentric hat squ hack squat. What are my thoughts on it? You know, in other words, I'm assuming you mean very slow negative. I love it. Hack squats are hard on the knees. So I never recommend doing this type of hack squat where our feet are low on the platform and close together with heavy weight. But since we're using a lighter weight, it's, uh, it's okay. What's the difference between a regular hack squat and a reverse hack squat? What's the difference between a regular hack squat and a reverse hack squat? I mean, I can honestly say never in my life have I done a reverse hack squat. So I couldn't tell you from experience. However, I would imagine you're gonna get a lot more glutes, hamstrings involved in a reverse hack squat than you would traditional hack squat. I just never was like, the thing that always bothered me was like putting my face right on that mat. I don't like things touching my face, especially not where strangers' heady, uh, heady, heady sweats. So I was gonna say sweaty heads go. That's leg day for you. Do you have any tips on how to use a hack squat machine if you're short, like 411? How do you use a hack squat machine if you're short, like 411? It's hard, it's hard. Um, you're not, probably not gonna get the kind of depth that you want. So you may want to focus more on your free weight exercises, um, like the goblet squat. That's one of the challenges with machines, guys, is they really control your range of motion. And if you fall into that category under five feet tall, it might really limit your range of motion. Okay, final set, feet close together, 10 reps, followed by the goblet squat. Uh. Right into the goblet. Elevating the heels will help keep tension on the quads. There it is. Three supersets. Quads are absolutely on fire right now. Feels good. What ingredients do you look for in a pre-workout? What ingredients do I look for in a pre-workout? You gotta have caffeine, and most pre-workouts do have caffeine. Caffeine is one of the single most studied performance ingredients out there. So anywhere between 200 and 300 seems to be ideal. I also look for 
High doses of citrulline, over six grams ideally. Beta alanine, 3.2 grams. Um, I like throwing in something like maybe, um, you know, creatine's okay, not necessary really. Um, some other performance enhancing ingredients like teacrine is a big one that helps provide you with that central nervous system stimulus without, uh, you know, something that you're gonna become accustomed. Those are some of the things that I look for. And it depends on what I'm training for the day. If I'm just doing arms or shoulders, it's more of a pump product, less caffeine. Um, whereas leg day, I need it all. Give it all. If I can only work out at night, is it okay to take one without caffeine? Yeah, if you can only work out at night, is it okay to take a pre-workout without caffeine? Yeah. I wouldn't recommend taking a pre-workout within four hours of bedtime. I think it's gonna be a little tough for you to sleep. Okay, now we're gonna go to the seated leg curl. It's time to work hamstrings. Our quads are pretty well done for. Um, so we're gonna go seated hamstring curl. And we're gonna superset this with a stiff-legged deadlift. Um, super lightweight on this, focusing on a really strong hamstring contraction. Um, for this one. So guys, on we have a heavy day. I do a heavy day and a light day each week for legs. On my heavy day, I'm all about moving weight. I'm all about pushing myself on weight. On the lighter day, like today, it's more about the quality of the contraction. Making sure we get a really good stretch and a really good contraction with each and every rep. Do I believe most gains come from nutrition? No, I believe all gains come from nutrition. That's the truth, guys. No, I mean, you gotta have, you gotta have exercise in there in order to help produce those gains. Uh, otherwise, you have no stimulus in order to grow off of, but vice versa, if you don't have the nutrition, the gains aren't there. My favorite superhero, that's tough. I've got so many of them, it depends on the day. I don't know that I have one favorite superhero um I, I don't know i can't say i have one and i have just about every one of their shaker bottles for every superhero so it depends on the day but i will say this uh dark knight like batman it's probably my favorite movie to watch uh was it dark knight returns is one of my favorite movies of all time so yes okay for the hamstring curl we are going to, again, go 15 reps here. So we're gonna pick a weight that we feel like we can really keep under control. And uh, no, we're going 10 reps, excuse me, 10 reps, 10 reps on this guy. So we'll come down, lock it in. Flex your toes back on a seated hamstring curl. And that's gonna really help engage your hamstrings. My, my shins are sweating. Guys, if your shins are sweating on leg day, that's a good leg, and I don't even sweat. You guys know that, to follow me. I don't sweat, here we go. that guy up right away 10 very controlled here on the dumbbell Romania deadlifts and we're actually going to elevate our toes here okay so our toes are elevated nice and slow big stretch pounds is a fraction of what I would do on a strength day but it's enough especially following leg curls later on in a workout get a great contraction there what are your favorite sources of pre-workout carbs my favorite sources of pre-workout carbs 
Um, 90% of the time I'm jasmine rice. I love jasmine rice, taste, texture, quality of it, very easy to digest. Uh, sweet potatoes, white sweet potatoes more specifically. Um, I like pre-workout as well. A little more fiber from those. Sometimes I get a little bloated. Um, if I'm in a hurry, rice cakes or cream of rice. Training tips for a skinny guy trying to put on muscle. Um, you gotta push yourself with workouts like this. Two, nutrition has to be there and has to be there every single day. The mistake I see a lot of people trying to make when they're trying to bulk or make when they're trying to bulk is they're really good like two or three days a week. They get in their 4,000 calories or whatever it is they're shooting for and then another couple days forget to prep their food, live off bars and shakes all day and get 2,000 calories in. You gotta get the food in every single day. Consistency over time equals results. <sighs> My thoughts on creatine and its importance. I don't know why you wouldn't take creatine. It's one of the most studied muscle building ingredients. Out. In fact, probably is the biggest, most studied, most effective muscle building ingredient out there. And there's really no adverse reactions as long as you don't have kidney issues. I take it all year long and I recommend it to male, female, young, old, weight gain, weight loss. I just don't see a downside to taking it. Is it necessary to load creatine? No, it's not necessary. It doesn't hurt if you wanna get those effects in a little quicker. Maybe your first time you take creatine, load and go like 20 to 25 grams the first five days and then back off to seven grams a day after that. You can get it in your system a little faster, but uh, eventually it's gonna get in your bloodstream either way, so. Okay, second set. And I'm really pushing myself back here the mistake a lot of people make is they let their hips come up when they're doing this and they get lower back involved. I'm trying to keep my lower back against the pad and flex those toes back so I can focus on the hamstring. So I actually push back to make sure that I'm keeping my back against the pad. Pop right up, super controlled. Toes elevated, I keep going heels. Toes elevated, big stretch. I'm not coming all the way up because we don't want to rest. Keep the tension, just like the goblet squats. No rest at the top. So guys, I'm gonna have a cheat meal this weekend. I like doing cheat meals on Saturday and I gotta know, burger or pizza? I like both of them. Or sushi, burger, pizza, or sushi are our suggestions. So let's see in the chat, you guys wanna see me throw down that cheat meal pick with burger, pizza, or sushi tomorrow. Do I ever change the position of my toes on leg curl or leg extension and does it make a difference? No, I don't change it because no, it doesn't make a difference. It may make like a tiny difference, but trust me guys, it's not enough to even pay attention to. What are your thoughts on the anabolic window after a workout? What are my thoughts on the anabolic window after a workout? I think there is an anabolic window after a workout, no doubt. Um, glute four is elevated following a uh, vigorous exercise routine which means your body can absorb more nutrients at that time. You can absorb more protein at that time. So I do think it's important to take advantage of that. However, the anabolic window stays open a lot longer than we used to think. It used to be like, well, if you don't get in in 30 minutes and you missed your gains, really what they found out is it's more like three hours. So where I used to like finish my last set, chug my shake, 
Now, you know, today I'm gonna drive back to work, mix up a shake within probably 35 minutes. Hearts for pizza, thumbs up for burgers. It's a close one. Hearts for pizza, thumbs up for burgers. Okay? Hearts for pizza, thumbs up. Facebook's about the sushi. Guys, I don't really see a downside to doing all three after this workout. So that's an option too. But let's get some hearts. Let's get some thumbs up. Let's do our, go ahead. Do you prefer a high fat or a high carb diet? Ooh, good question. Do I prefer a high fat or high carb diet? Um, when I was younger, I preferred high carbs. Now here's the deal, younger, you can actually handle more carbohydrates. As you get older, your body becomes a little more sensitive to carbohydrates. I'm 32 now, I actually prefer a higher fat diet now. Um, but at the end of the day, calories are the most important thing. Um, you gotta find what works for you. But I actually prefer a little higher fat diet. Okay. Burgers! I was kinda hoping you guys would say burgers. A sushi burger. A cheeseburger. Oh, dang, guys. All right. Send me the links, guys. Put it in the chat. Where, where should I go? It's got to be somewhere around here. No fast food. Okay, last set. Hamstrings are screaming right now. So, perfect time to finish it off with these Romanian deadlifts. Drive the hips back. Now all that's left, guys, is calves. Favorite flavor of the ISO 100? Favorite flavor of the ISO 100, guys, currently peanut butter is my favorite flavor, followed by chocolate peanut butter, ch followed by chocolate coconut, followed by fudge brownie. Ideally, I like to mix the peanut butter and the banana together. Five guys. Five guys? Come on, guys. I don't know. Five guys is all right, but I like a... I like like a good burger, like good quality burger. No fast food. I don't know. Five Guys is all right. It's all right. Yeah, we got a place here called Big Judd's. The man versus food challenge there. They've got a one pound, two pound burger challenge there. I've successfully accomplished the one pound one. Maybe I'll take on the two pound one. Yeah. Only felt mildly disgusting afterwards. Okay, we're gonna switch now. Go to calves to finish, and what we had originally planned on was a seated calf raise superset with donkey calves. Uh, but just because of where everything's laid out today, we're gonna switch that a little bit. And I'm gonna do the uh, straight leg calf raise here, and I'm gonna superset it with a donkey calf raise. And we're gonna see how this works out. I'm um, doing it just a little bit differently. So leg press works out very well for calves. Uh, most gyms have a leg press machine like this, and it's just a real easy one to get into. It doesn't require a lot of setup, which is kind of nice. So we'll go 15 reps on here, and we'll superset that with a donkey calf raise. Big stretch, big contraction here. Three, all the way back, all the way forward. Four. Uh, 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 eight. There's 15. Now I'm gonna pop right over here. We're gonna see if we can get these dumbbells to stay in place for us. And we're gonna try a modified donkey calf raise here. 
and that's not gonna work for us. So donkey calf raise, we can do. I don't know if we can get the camera angle there, but we're coming on the edge of a bench to pop our feet up just a little bit. And we're gonna bend over and try and get in good quality contractions and this is not gonna work here. So we'll stick to our linear sets over here without this. If you are doing a seated calf raise and you can just get on the back of the machine and bend over, a lot of times you can get a good body weight donkey calf raise in there. But for today, we'll just keep it straight on here just so we don't have to get crazy with the camera. <laughs> Who has better calves, me or donkeys? That's a good, that's a good horses. question. Or horses. I don't, think, I don't think horses really have much for calves, but they definitely got me in the quad gains. So we're taking the knee sleeves off here in preparation for our Flex Friday picture that we will take immediately following the live stream. Now here's the deal, guys. If you guys take a Flex Friday picture on upper body day, you better plan on taking one on lower body day too. Okay, 15 more reps here. Big contractions. Three. Pick a lightweight. Four that you can really get a good range of motion in on. Five. Ooh, 15. The mistake I made when I first started training, I'd go too heavy on calves and I'd maybe get half 50% of the range of motion. You really need to focus on getting a full range of motion if you want to develop your calves as best as possible. What is the best workout for the best workout for cankles. Um, some cankles are genetic and sometimes it just means you have excess body fat and it's surrounding your ankles forming cankles, in which case a little more cardio and a little less food should do the trick. Uh, what do the knee sleeves help? The knee sleeves are uh, good for warming up the knee joint, which will help create circulation and uh, protect it from injury. So I wear knee sleeves. There's really no downside to wearing them. They provide that uh, support that will help protect the knees. Third set, 15 reps, nice and controlled. Uh, whew. Should be burning pretty good after each set of these calf raises. L-carnitine for fat loss. I always take L-carnitine when I'm on a cutting phase. Um, most of the studies are more like performance enhancing and nutrient absorption. Um, the real benefits from a scientific standpoint are that it allows you to better absorb, assimilate, and use maybe some of those carbohydrates that you take in. So I take it three times a day, 1,000 milligrams, 30 minutes before meals. What are your thoughts on glutamine? Glutamine, I love it. 15 grams a day. Five grams first thing in the morning, five grams post-workout, and five grams before bed. More important in a calorie deficit than when you're in a surplus, um, but very important when cutting. All right, guys, last set. Quads are pumped, calves are pumped, the booty's pumped. Here we go. Uh. That's all we got planned on guys, but we got a couple minutes left and I feel that leg extension machine just calling my name for a quick little burnout. We're going to go a triple drop set on leg extension just because, well, because quad gains, that's why. I'm just feeling like we could use a little more quads here. So if you've got a little gas left in the tank following this workout, I want you to try a triple drop set on leg extension. So for this one, Pick a pretty lightweight, 
Do about 10 reps, drop the weight, go to failure, drop the weight, go to failure. So three sets here. I'm gonna start off with like 115 pounds and we're just gonna roll through this real quick just for kicks. Comes a point where you just kinda go numb and it doesn't really matter anymore. Let's go. Right away, drop it down. I'm gonna drop down two, go to failure. Drop it down two and finish off. There it is, guys. That's gonna do it for our Flex Friday leg day. You guys asked for it, there it is. Go give this workout a try this weekend. Let me know how you guys like it. Follow me along, follow along with me. Uh, check me out on Instagram at trainermike1. You guys have any questions, ask them there. Stories, DMs. Uh, follow me on Facebook at Trainer Mike Physique. Check me out on Body Space and Mr. Symmetry. That's it for today, guys. We are checking out Flex Friday, leg day complete.